Well, COVID-19 is not the only crisis that Maryland trauma hospitals have been dealing with this past year. Dr. Thomas Scalia is the physician in chief at our Adams Crowley Shock Trauma Center. And James Gannon is the chairman of TraumaNet and trauma program manager at Sinai Hospital. Welcome you two. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I'm happy to have you here. And now before we get into everything, I just want to remind people about TraumaNet and the important work that your organization is doing. Sure, uh, TraumaNet is a multidisciplinary organization. It's uh, comprised of all of the Maryland Trauma Centers and specialty centers across the state. Uh, we have a focus on clinical care, research, education, injury prevention, um, and a, a strong collaboration just statewide on what makes best trauma care for our citizens. And as we said earlier, COVID-19 hasn't been the only challenge for trauma centers right now. Talk about the violence in Baltimore and just in and around Maryland in general. Well, the violence has uh, really shown no signs of abating. I looked at the homicide numbers this morning. In the last five years, we're tracking to be number two behind the 2016 numbers. Our uh, numbers of interpersonal violence have, uh, they went down for a very short amount of time when COVID started and they're right back to where they were. They're frankly higher. Well, that's and, what I was uh, gonna ask you. So how has the pandemic affected the number of trauma patients needing care as a result of crimes? It went down and then back up? That's what we saw. And that's what I think everybody saw. Actually, not just in Baltimore, this is nationwide. So who are the victims that the trauma centers are seeing? I mean, it, it's, it's everyone. It's, uh, it, you know, everything from domestic violence to interpersonal violence. Uh, the, the youth are, are just strongly affected by this. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking with my colleagues at other trauma centers, they've seen a significant rise in violent crimes. And talk about that toll that violent crime takes on healthcare workers in the trauma centers. It's... Uh... It's emotionally really exhausting, frankly. Uh, these uh, victims are often young people. And so particularly when they die, it is the opportunity to go tell some mom that their usually son is not coming home. And to do that over and over again is, it's really hard. Um, and particularly some of these poor families, this is not the, their first rodeo. They've lost another child a year or two ago. And it's, it's just, uh, it's the worst part of what we do. So what are the programs that have trauma centers um, that, that, that they put in place basically to help curb repeat offenders? Is there anything? Sure. Um, just about all of the Maryland, Maryland trauma centers have a violence interruption program or a violent, violence interruption group that uh, works within the hospital, but often that is just too late. You already have the victims within the hospital and we're helping them after the fact. Uh, you know, we're really looking at the communities throughout the state to, to come together and say enough's enough for this. So what help is available to decrease that steady stream of violence coming through the state trauma centers. Well, I think Jamie uh, nailed this in, in yeah. that it's it's there. It's just not enough. Got it. And uh, we are chipping away at a epidemic, and we're not making a hell of a lot of progress. At, on our Maryland Trauma Net website, we have uh, we do have a page for the violence uh, intervention groups and what is available um, at maryland-traumanet.com. Um, so that is one place to start their safe streets. So it's, it's all throughout the, the state, these resources are available. Well, we just wanna thank both of you for being here and for your life-saving work. Of course, this is needed and something we can't forget about just because COVID-19 is happening. We appreciate you being here and we'll be right back with more Midday Maryland right after this, stay tuned. Yeah. 